My mother took me to Cuba and I was a very ugly, overweight teenager. And that didn't matter in Cuba. Uh, and I immediately decided life was better in Cuba than Philadelphia. And um, Cuban guys played cigar, uh, uh, guitars and looked at me with their big brown eyes and I thought, this is for me. So I started going back every summer and going to summer school and I ended up teaching English to Cubans in the Binational Center and I just love Cuba. So my dream was to find a Cuban husband, which I did. And I'm still married to him 56 years later or something. And, um, but that's what started me off in my international life. Although my family was quite internationally oriented, they weren't thrilled that I was going to Cuba. It didn't seem very culturally enriching, but to me it was. I learned Spanish and met a lot of great people. And I met my first group of study abroad students who were in the University of Havana at Goucher College. And they were very bored because they were stuck off in some house all by themselves. And I introduced them to all the Cuban men in my building. And anyway, I started going to Cuba. I switched my major. I went to Mount Holyoke. I switched my major from French to Spanish. And um, that just wasn't for me. I transferred to the University of Pennsylvania and majored in Latin American studies. And then I got a job as director of foreign students. And the first foreign student, my first day at work, was the man who is still my husband. Uh, well, I, I married my Cuban husband. And he became the first Cuban-American U.S. ambassador. And they sent us to Nicaragua. And this was a very interesting experience because there was a revolution coming the Sandinista Revolution, and we had a Marine Corps guarding our embassy who didn't speak a word of Spanish. And since I had a doctorate by then in Latin American literature, I took it on myself to grab these Marines and sit them down at a table and start teaching them Spanish. I don't know that they were interested, but I felt they should at least be able to answer the telephone because people were getting nervous. And I was getting nervous because I represented the American women community and I was scared. I was scared for my daughter, I was scared for my husband and he finally had to leave because uh, they found his picture, the CIA found a picture of him in one of the Sandinista guerrillas pockets and they decided he better get out. So I was left alone in Cuba with my Jack Russell, my Labrador retriever, my parrot Rosita who was a real native Nicaraguan and um, our cat and I waited and waited for things to calm down so that my husband would come back, but it was impossible. It got worse and worse. So I went home with all my animals and um, without a job, because I'd given up my job at the University of Illinois, where I was hired to take care of study abroad, to be assistant director, really. And I loved that job. It was wonderful. And I spent my first couple of years as assistant director of study abroad setting up reciprocal exchanges with the United Kingdom. And by the time I was through with that, we had about 20 reciprocal exchanges because it was cheap to do it that way. And Margaret Thatcher came in and, of course, raised the prices. Uh, but to be able to go for Illinois tuition was a good deal for our kids. So we had a terrific experience working with the United Kingdom. I loved it, and the students went for a whole year because that's all the British had. They didn't have semesters when we first started. But I still really wanted to send students to Latin America, and nobody was really doing that. So my husband, since he'd been an ambassador, was asked to give lectures all around Latin America so I said, I want to go. So I went and he took me to Argentina. And I said, gee, this would be a wonderful place to have a program. So there were no American programs. And the Falklands War had just ended. The place had a 20% inflation. It was miserable. But um, the embassy said, well, why don't you try that university because it's very entrepreneurial and it sends it seems to be signing a lot of agreements. So I went and started a program at 
a uni the University of Belgrano, a private school at, uh, in Buenos Aires, and they took our kids because it was still uh, too risky to have uh, dealings with institutions that really didn't want American students. The, thing, the situation was still a little unstable, and but I was able from there to uh, get a job where I could build up programs and take students from other schools along with Illinois. And from there, my husband, because he'd been to the University of Chicago, and the University of, then the Chileans were very pro Milton Friedman and the University of Chicago, I was able to get my foot in to the Chilean universities. So I started programs there. Uh, I mean, you know, you have to realize initially there wasn't a lot of interest in Latin America among our students. They all wanted to go to Spain or Europe or Italy. And it was hard to convince them because the kind of student who goes to Latin America is not going to be just because they speak Spanish or are interested in Spanish, the same kind of student who goes to Spain. Because Spain is Europe, and Latin America is definitely not Europe. I mean, it's more exotic, it has uh, more political issues, it's got indigenous populations, it has, well, and it's not necessarily in love with the United States at that time. And I, uh, I didn't find it easy. Uh, it was easy to go to Mexico, and that's one place I didn't go. So I worked in a lot of Latin American countries and got, I was lucky that the University of Illinois had a wonderful Latin American Studies Center. So I built a big program with Illinois, University of Texas, Austin, and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And we built a consortium and we worked together to build a big program that took students from all over. Uh, Illinois treated me very well. It was a wonderful job. I built the study abroad office from 11 students to 1,500 before I left. And uh, I, I think I have to say that study abroad has become more difficult to work with, with all the world problems, the risk management took over. Um, the uh, colleges and a big state university are going to pull against the center, which is where an office like Study Abroad usually is, and they want to have their own programs and they don't want to pay money. That's a big problem is how do you pay for all of this? So uh, we, we managed to, to fund ourselves, but it wasn't easy. And I think that by the time I left Illinois, I left it in pretty good shape. It was a very successful and well thought of program. And then I worked, went to work for Butler University and started their Latin American programs for the Institute for Study Abroad. And I took the programs that we had created as the consortium of Illinois, Texas, and North Carolina because none of us were really in a position to take so many non-home students. I mean, we had students from all kinds of Ivy League colleges, which the chancellor said, that's very nice, but where are the Illinois students? So I said, okay, Butler, you do the administration, we'll do the academics. And it, it worked out pretty well for a while. Well, I think the important thing is, to me, if you're interested in something international, I really wouldn't want to hire you if you hadn't had an international experience that had some impact on you. I'm not talking about you went to Paris for three days. I don't think you can relate to what the experience does to you unless you've had to cross Europe by yourself in a train, uh, had adventures where you've had to cope, see how other people see the world, and then you're useful in terms of talking to other students in an office setting, for example. So for me, it's important if you want to study overseas, I mean, if you want an international career, you really do have to have some international experience. I don't see why you would want to do it if you hadn't been overseas somewhere. Um, and then I think there's so many possibilities. I mean, it's, there's, there's many job opportunities and there's many graduate programs and um, it, it's not an ideal time to be working with the State Department, but I think that there's a lot of scholarships. 
even our embassy in Buenos Aires, it, it, it would take on our kids in the commercial sector uh, to help uh, businessmen who wanted to, uh, who are Americans or Argentinians. And it's great for a business major to have that type of contact. So I'm sorry, I, I feel that you have to show that you have got some uh, experience overseas that is meaningful. One of the things that I'm sorry about, thinking about all of the things that I've done, year-long programs, uh, research programs, semester programs, summer programs, is that now what seems to be trendy is for a professor to take a group of students for two weeks, maximum a month. They may teach them in English, and they aren't really integrated into a foreign culture. They're there. It's better than nothing. I can't complain about that. But it's not the way I would like to see it evolve, and I don't know if it's going to change back again, if students will be willing to spend more time. Part of it's financial, part of it is commitments we all have in our lives here in the United States. Uh, I went to recruit students at Brandeis University, and I met students who had three majors, four majors. How can they possibly do anything? They're so busy, and they're editor of the newspaper and head of the hockey team. And the, I mean, the kids are so overwhelmed. So I think it's wonderful if we can get them out and they can get a little perspective on what it is to be an American. And that's an important thing that study abroad does for you. Um, being a tourist isn't quite the same. Uh, I think spending life in another culture and getting to hear what they say about us um, is important because you begin to think about who am I and what do I really believe in and am I right? Are they right? It's, it's a good experience. So I, I'm all in favor of it and I will keep pushing for this until I drop dead. I'll keep pushing students to study abroad. I think it's very important.